All right, here with uh, Coach Moss from uh, Palmyra. Now, obviously, Coach Moss, uh, last year probably had to be one of the stranger years that you've ever had uh, as a head coach or a coach, um, at, at, you know, any, <laughs> any time. But um, I mean, what's your biggest takeaway from what your group was able to accomplish and during a really strange time? Uh, you, you know, we, we got to play seven games, and uh, we, we had two games canceled due to COVID. We, we got to reschedule one of them. I think if you would have asked any of our boys, our coaching staff, if you would have told us at the beginning of the year, we're going to get seven in, I think we would have all signed up for it. Me personally, I thought we'd probably be one, two, or three, and it, it'd all be done. But we, our, our kids did a really good job of taking care of themselves. Uh, we, we were fortunate that our opponents did the same thing, and we, we got the most out of the season that we could. So. Okay, now you've got a, a great looking prospect here in Andrew Walke. Uh, that could probably do an awful lot for you. And, uh, you know, I guess what does he bring to the table, both as an athlete, as a player, and, and you know, as a leader and, and whatnot off the field? The best part about Andrew Walke is not only is he our best player, he is, he, he is also our best teammate. And uh, there's, there's plenty of coaches I'll tell you, it, it, it doesn't work when your best player is not your best teammate. It's just, it, it's tough and it makes, makes going to practice not a whole lot of fun. Um, best part about Andrew is, is uh, he, 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 he is our best best teammate, best leader, uh, great kid in the classroom, carries a 4.0, great point average, um, great folks, great family. He, he, he is the total total package in what you're looking for, for as a coach. So. Okay, now at 6'4", 200, I mean, uh, I mean, he probably, he, I know I've watched the film. He, kind of, he stands out. You, you immediately you know, can recognize him. Um, where do you think he translates best at, at the next level? You know, uh, we, we, we've talked to a lot of coaches. I uh, brought in a new defensive coordinator this year. Got, a, got my buddy Bump Christensen. Uh, he's, he, he was in Class A. He was a, he was a header in Northeast couple of years uh, got him out of there brought him down as, as my DC this year and we, we moved Andrew to we, we call him a buck end it's a rush end position thinking that at the next level that that might be where where he fits in if he doesn't fit in on the offensive side of the ball um, he's at a 4.9 right now in terms of 40 speed a little, a little slow um, to play wide receiver at division one level but Part of that is he's such a big frame. His strength is taking a while to catch up to his body. And he's dropped a tenth, two tenths off his 40 each year since his freshman year. So we're still hoping he can, he can get down there in that 4-7 range and play that, play that kind of that, that, that flex receiver um, position where you're not necessarily the guy that's going to take the top off the defense. You're, you're, you're going to be the guy working underneath. He's got a big frame, and multiple coaches have told me he's got the best hands of anybody in the state, regardless of class. If, if you throw it anywhere within the vicinity, he's catching the football. So there's there's lots of guys excited about that. And he, he's a guy that's willing to block as well, which is not, not always something you find at the receiver position. He's more than happy to go out there and get his hands on somebody. Um, do that too. So yeah, no, no doubt about that. That's something you don't see on film very often. Exactly. It doesn't. That doesn't make a whole lot of highlight films. Mm-hmm. But it's a big part of the game. Makes the other kids highlight films. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, now, you know, in terms of recruiting and everything, I mean, you feel like it's been a little slower, or that he's been hurt due to the pandemic and everything. He has. You know, he's. In, in fact, I think it was. Uh, I think it was you and Sean on the ticket maybe the other day talking about uh it, it, it's probably not the class of 2021 that's been hurt the most mm-hmm. it's a class of 2022 because those kids have missed the junior visit days um they missed that that summer of camps last summer that is so important because you know this this summer if if camps even happen the, those college coaches are they've they've got a plan Plus, plus they've got that extra group of kids, kind of in limbo. I mean, those those guys are in terrible positions. You know, they've they've got a limited number of scholarships. I think, from what I know, they've they, they've given this year's seniors kind of a free ride. But 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 there's been no plan for the for the future as to what what they're going to do. So, you know, that that does put the class of 2022 in a, a tough spot. They, they they don't really know where they fit. So. 
A good thing that, I mean, he's got the measurables. He's got, uh, you know, you mentioned 4-0 in the classroom and everything. He's going to help too, yeah. So, you know, if, if he, he's, a, he, he's a kid that, that you know, if a, if a college wants to get on campus and they don't have the money, say, say in the football world, they can still get him on campus other ways and then you can see, see what opens up later as well. So. Okay. Um, now looking ahead to, to next year, I mean, um, how are you feeling about the team that you return, especially, you know, with Andrew kind of leading the way? I don't know if he mentioned it or not, but um, he's pretty humble when you yeah. talk to him. Yeah. You notice he's, he's a man of few words. Uh, but uh, the, the, the unique thing about Andrew is, is that he was a consensus Lincoln Journal star, Omaha World Herald, first team All-State receiver the first three years of his career. But what doesn't get mentioned in there is that he had three starting, three different starting quarterbacks yeah. each of those three years. Nor, normally when you get a receiver that puts up numbers and gets recognition, well, it's because you got a, you got a guy throwing him the ball. Well, he, he's had three different guys doing that. Finally, this next year, quarterback comes back. So this is going to be the first time where we, we, we've got a duo coming back. So we're, we're, we're super excited about that. We, we don't have to teach a new quarterback the, the ins and the outs. And we're going to be so much further ahead this year that now we're going to move him around on the, on the field. We're, we're going to try to hide him and, uh, you know, get, get him in space the best we can. And uh, because that's, we, we've, we, we play a man football. And uh, he, he always obviously sees the other team's best player. He, 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 even if it takes him out of scheme, mm-hmm. that's what they do in eight man. And uh, when one can't stop him, he sees two, he sees three. And th- th- this next year, we'll have the options to to pull some of them guys away from him too. So when you when you see a guy like a Tyhon go to Nebraska or or Seth Malcolm from yep. you know from uh, eight man Iowa yep. make it to Nebraska, I mean. How does that affect your kids and your program, knowing that, hey, you know what, even though we play eight-man, you can still accomplish, you can still play football at the highest level? It gives them hope. You know, there's, there, there's a lot of years there where there's, there's kind of a stigma. Eight-man football, you know, it, it, is it football? Is it basketball on grass? How do stats compare? Uh, my, one of my assistant coaches played eight-man uh, football in high school and went on to play college ball. And, uh, we talk about it quite a bit because we were 11 man up until this is our second cycle of eight man, and we'll be back to 11 man here in the next okay. next cycle as well. So you know we're we're in that we're in that tough spot of how do numbers fall on the record boards? You know, is it 11 man record board, eight man record board, or and we we make the argument that for receivers and running backs and the, the offensive stats, it's actually harder to pile up the numbers one if you break one you only got 80 yards Mm -hmm. you don't have 100 on a breakaway Um, also the field is so much sure there's there's plays you can't call i my 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 11 man offense is 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 predicated off a bubble screen as many people as cringe when they hear bubble screen (laughs) in the state right now but uh um that's that that's that's what that's that's what we predicate off of. I know what Scott's trying to do, and uh, you can't run that eight man football because when when you're in bubble screen, there is a sideline. Yep. You, you you can't run it. There, there's no room. Same way with option football. There's it's tough. So there's there's a there, there's a give and a take there in eight man football, but uh, it, it's it, it's nice to see the college coaches are recognizing that a football player. Still a football player. It still boils down to the Jimmys and the Joes, and uh, uh, a kid that can play football can play football at any level.